guys, it's Ben here, and welcome back to a hands-on introduction to computer programming. This is episode three. Today we're going to be talking about control structures, and we're going to be attacking those little statements that I've always been talking about since the very beginning of the series. We're going to finally figure out exactly what a statement is. If you missed the last video, we talked about output and we talked about input, and then we also talked about data types and variables, and we did some examples with uh, each primitive type of uh, data type in C++. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Our first topic, we're going to talk about statements first because we're going to be working with a lot of those today. So a statement is a word that tells the computer to do some specific action. So for example, a print was an example of a, a statement that told the computer to do something. It told the computer to print out whatever was after it. Uh, most statements have some kind of variable or constant or maybe even another statement or an expression after it. So it, going back to print, we had print and then in quotes like hello world or we had a variable and it would print out whatever was in that variable or it would print out whatever was in those quotes or number or anything like that. An example that we've seen in C++ of statements that we haven't really talked about it all that much is the return statement which also takes something right after it. It takes, in our case, a number. And basically, I mean, I'll go over that in a coming up video, I promise, that's coming. Um, but return basically says, okay, exit out of the function, and then whatever is after it, the little, in our case, it was a zero. Uh, take that and make it the, the value of the function. And that all makes sense whenever we actually go and, you know, talk about functions. Uh, statements are usually keywords, um, which a keyword, also known as a protected or a restricted word, is a word, or uh, also reserved words is another term for that. Uh, it's basically a, a word or a name that cannot be used for anything else. So you can't make a variable called print, for example. So that's, that's the idea of a, a keyword. And most, if not all, statements are keywords. Okay, so now that we know what a statement is, Let's look at probably one of the most uh, common statements out there, called an if statement. Now an if statement is pretty self-explanatory. It looks right after the if part and it says, okay, it, you, it takes a, uh, an expression and it says, okay, is this expression true or not? So for example, uh, two equals four, that would come out as not true. It, it, all, it always boils down to a Boolean value true or false and obviously 2 is not equal to 4 so that would come out as false but in the event that it does come out as true it will run a block of code so I'm gonna be working in uh, I'm gonna be working in C++ for basically this entire video um, we'll stop over by Python but uh, I mostly just want to work with C++ because of a topic that we'll talk about in a minute here um, that is only available in C++ so I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to save this. Uh, let's see, what do I want to name this? Uh, let's call it statements. Am I spelling this right? Yes, I am. Okay, statements.cpp, include IO stream, we need that. And don't forget the using namespace std int main. I think I, uh, I think I actually said what it would be like if we didn't have this in here. Um, so actually, let me just really quickly, let's omit this, and I'm just going to rewrite our C, or our uh, hello world application. You know, we had C out, hello world, and all that. And they'll return zero. Return zero. There we go. If we didn't have the, the uh, using namespace std, it would basically come out as... You can see it wouldn't. It doesn't let us uh, compile this because it expects. Yeah, you can see it says endl was not declared in this scope. It doesn't know where c out and endl actually are, so we would have to put in std and then double uh, colons in order to get that to work. And then you know that'll work just fine. Um, so basically, just the using namespace name space std. Just lets us get rid of this std stuff and make our, our program a little bit uh, easier to read, basically, and a little bit smaller. But okay, 
So if statements, uh, let's let's uh, declare a variable here. We're gonna we'll just call it x, and we're actually gonna let the user input to x here, and let's just output x really quick, and we can see that just like before, you know, we can put in 13, and it will output 13, and 13 is the value of x. An if statement will test if the value of x is something, for example. So I would do if, and then for C++ it has to be in parentheses. It doesn't have to in Python. Sometimes uh, people will still put that in there for readability. Um, but in C++ you do have to put whatever you're checking. Uh, the expression is what it's called uh, for an if statement in, uh, in parentheses. So we'll say if x uh, we'll do is greater than 3. We'll say C out. Uh, you just call it greater than 3. And L. I'll put a line in there. And now you can see if we do any number that is greater than 3, so 7 for example, first it prints out 7 like we told it here on line 9, and then it prints out greater than 3 because it checks right here. Is x greater than 3? This is our expression. And because x in this case was 7, that comes out as true. And so it will run this little block of code. This block of code is called the then statement, usually. You, sometimes people will call it that. Sometimes they don't call it anything. But if then we re-ran this and we said 1, you can see it prints out 1 like we told it on line 9, but then it doesn't do anything because x is not greater than 3. Now if we wanted to check for an exact value of x, we can't do if x equals 3 because then x will become 3 and I believe that will come out as true anyway because this is not an expression this is just an assignment so to check if a value is the exact is error and if a, a variable is the exact value we would do double equals and in this case uh, we'll do 27 and then we'll just change our our message down here to is 27 so if we save that and recompile and run that and we put in, you know, 32, it won't say is 27. And if we put in 1, it won't say is 27. But if we put in 27, sure enough, it says is 27. So that's kind of the basic idea of that. Now, if we wanted to do the opposite of this, if we wanted to make it so that uh, we want to check if x is anything but 27, we would do a... Uh, exclamation point equals which basically means is not so recompile that run it and if we do 24 you can see actually we're gonna name this is not 27 there we go so that it doesn't make absolutely no sense but 24 is not 27 you know 89 is not 27 but 27 you can see we don't have that is not 27 because it is 27. So that's how you do uh, equals to and is not equals to as well as greater than and uh, well less than obviously is, is pretty pretty straightforward it's just that. Okay so how can we check if this if statement didn't run because the equation was not or the uh, the expression here came out as false? Well I think probably the only way that we could do that is through the use of another statement called an else statement. And an else statement is well, pretty straightforward. You have uh, an if statement and an else statement is a follow-up to an if statement that catches if the if expression was not true and then it runs its own then block. So let's do else right here. You have to put it right after an if statement. So you can't just have like an else block up here. Like I, I couldn't just do like else, you know, whatever. I couldn't do that. It has to be right after an if statement. And we'll do, you know, equals equals is 27. And then down here we'll do for anything that isn't 27, we'll say is not 27. Whoops. And L. There we go. Then if we compile this out and we run it and we type in 27, you can see it says is 27, but if we type in 83, it'll come out as is not 27 instead of print out absolutely nothing. Finally, let's see what if we wanted to check for another 
uh, value. So say we wanted to check for 27, but we also wanted to check for uh, 64, for example. Well, we would use something called an else if statement or an elif statement in uh, Python. So to do an else if statement in C++, I'm going to give us a line here. It's actually pretty simple. You just type in else space if. Pretty, pretty simple. And then in uh, parentheses, you would put your next expression. So what did we say? 64. So x equals equals 64. Give ourselves a little block here, and I'm going to end it off there. Uh, you don't have to format it this way so that the curly bracket ending is on the same line as the else if. That's just my own personal preference for uh, the way that we set these up, but you don't have to do that. You can come up with your own style. Um, but what we're going to do is not 27 or 64, and we'll do is 64, and without a space there, and without messing up the entire line. I'm really good at this typing thing. Anyway, if we compile and run that, you can see we do, if we do 28, it says is not 27 or 64. But if we do 27, is 27. And if we do 64, is 64. And then, you know, obviously 89 is not 27 or 64. So that's the basic idea behind if, else if, and else statement. So you can now, uh, you can apply this to strings as well. So if we had a string that was like name, and we wanted to check if the name was like Tom, for example, you could do like name equals equals Tom, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I wanted to point out one other thing with uh, if statements and else if statements and all of that. Uh, you can see here I have a very incredibly basic if statement here that just checks if true is, well, true, and obviously it will always be true, because true is always true. Anyway. Uh, you can see it prints out this will always run and otherwise it'll print out this never runs and we can compile this and run that and you can see this always runs perfectly fine but because this is all on one line and this is also all on one line we really do not need these curly braces in here so we can actually get rid of them and this code will run just fine because there's only one line here if you have more than one line then you will need to have those curly braces in there. But because we only have one in here for the if statement and the else statement, uh, we can do it without the curly braces. So that's a little bit of a hack for you. Uh, just saves on like two bytes, but it, it can make a little bit of a difference in the readability, especially if you type your code out with their, your braces on their own lines like that. A lot of people will write their code like that. So this can save on like three different lines of code. Uh, if you just omit them. Okay, so there's one more type of statement that's similar to an if and an else and an if else if statement uh, called a switch statement that I want to talk about here. Now, a switch statement is, like I said, it's it's very similar to an if statement, but it only works on integer data types. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly an int like this. It could be a character or it could also be a boolean because those eventually boil down to an integer. A boolean is just zero or one, you know, false or true, and a character is just zero to 255, or if you want to think about it as more than zero, it would be one to 256. Either way, a switch statement only works for integer-ish values like that. So here, I have an integer named thing, and I can do a switch statement on thing. So the way I would start it is switch, and then in parentheses I would just have thing. I would just have the variable. Or I could do a constant, so I could just put four in place of thing if I really wanted to, but that would be kind of useless. Anyway, I would open it with curly braces. And then if I wanted to check the value, I would use a case label, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is a label to the computer that basically tells it where to begin or uh, where to end. In this case, it would just be where to begin. So, you know, I would do case 4, for example. I would do C out, you know, value is 4 if I wanted to. And I'll do end L. Now, even if I had multiple lines here, so I could do like C out, you know, cats are cool, whatever, I would still not put it in curly braces because I have that label there, so it, I don't really need it. So, let's also say I wanted to check for, you know, case is 3, you know, C out value is 3 and I don't have to go in descending order so I could do you know case 17 
see out value is 17 and then if I wanted to check where it wasn't any of those I would just do default see out and I'll just do value exists in this case and L now if I compile this and I run it statements.cpp oh statements if I compile this and run it you would expect because thing is 4 it would just run C out value is 4 well let's see what it actually does yeah you can see it runs everything it runs value is 4 value is 3 value is 17 and value exists so what gives well let's change this thing value let's just change it to 3 and see what happens there okay so it runs 3 17 and value exists uh, let's let's just change it to like 93 for example you can see it runs value exists so it seems to be running whatever comes after the case statement for that value and then it just runs everything else yeah that's the point of a case swi a switch case statement it runs whatever is at your your case label so you know in our case uh, we had we had four up here it'll run the four and everything after that this can be useful especially if you're working with like if you wanted to print out the lyrics of like a cumulative song so like uh, let's think of uh, like the the 12 days of Christmas for example that's an example of a cumulative song it would add more but you would still keep everything after that so this can have its uses especially in like you know like I said cumulative songs but sometimes it can kind of be annoying so how can we jump out if let's say you know we didn't want to have you know 17 unless it was 17 exactly so if we had four we had if we wanted to print out like value is four and value is three but nothing after that we would come to values three and we would just do break without enabling caps lock there we go and this will break out of our switch statement here so we can see we have values four then we have values four and values three change it to value is three whoops value is three but if we changed it to value is 17 again it runs value is 17 and value exists what a lot of people will do is they'll do break on every case statement so that it's basically an if but that kinda defeats the purpose of a switch statement so you're really really better off just using an if statement in that case but that's how a switch and a case and a default statement works okay so we've been working in C++ for this entire video so let's see what it's like over in Python so I'm gonna in this case again I'm gonna set the file type from the menu instead of save it out but okay let's make a let's make a value again we'll do x equals 12 and if we wanted to check if you know x is greater than 12 we would just do exactly like in C++ x is greater than 12 but in this case we are not putting it in parentheses we're able to just kinda leave it out now instead of opening curly brackets Python lets us just do a semicolon and then we have to always make sure that we are indented by one by pressing tab or if you want to use spaces you can do one two three four spaces you could do eight spaces two spaces whatever as long as it's consistent Python doesn't care too much but you can't as I believe you cannot uh, combine spaces and tabs so pick one basically I like tabs personally um, but that is a huge huge war in programming anyway we're gonna come in here and we're gonna name this statements and in our little indented block here we'll say you know print x is 12 pretty simple Python and you can see that for whatever reason it didn't run because I thought that it was equals equals anyway yeah it's it's greater than 12 is so we'll do greater than 12 and we'll change this to 14 my bad there we go x is greater than 12 now if we wanted to check if it was 12 we would just do equals equals and get the greater than out of there and change x to 12 of course there we go x is 12 there we go now else statements are well they're just else in Python so 
print x is something else. Something else. Wow. Typing. So you can see it's still 12, but if we change it to 13, x is something else. Else if statements are in Python, they're l if. So they're not else if, they're l if in Python. And same as an if statement, if, you know, else or else if x is 14, do print x is 14. You won't change x to 14, why not? And there you go, you can see x is 14, if I change this to 12, x is 12, and if I change it to 17, x is something else. So that's how you do uh, statements, else, if, and if statements in uh, Python. It does not have uh, switch and case statements, um, so you're clear on those. But that's how you do the, else, or the if and the elif and the else statements in Python. And that's all there is, so thank you guys for watching. In our next uh, video, we're going to be talking about arrays, which is, well, I'll actually talk about that when we get there. We probably should have talked about it in this episode, but I planned things out kind of weird, so we're going to be talking about arrays in the next episode. Uh, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.